not wanting to live. It's like being sad all the time. Being very, very, very sad. Sometimes I think that it's not necessarily my sadness and it multiplies over my skin and it gets into my heart and it gets into the marrow of my bones and my spirit. And it's like not even mine, but maybe it's something that I have to carry through. Like the last time I was depressed, that almost took me out. That's why I had to go and get the therapy because I was like, oh, I could die. Like I feel like that. And I wouldn't necessarily didn't feel like I would kill myself. I felt like I would just die. And so I said, I want to be alive. And I needed help to do that. And so I took cognitive behavioral therapy through a research study because I didn't have insurance. And I went. And they were like, you are the perfect case for cognitive <laughs> behavioral therapy. <laughs> they did. And these doctors were happy. They were like, and so they let me, like the man who wrote the book on it, I was his patient. Instead of exporting Sunbeam Coffee Makers and brand name blue jeans, we have managed to export the extreme 1989 South Central Los Angeles kind of violence that I grew up around. All right, I'm actually ready. The man on the news said, Last Friday, there had been 15 murders before 7 o'clock in the evening, which means people had been killing and dying pre-dawn over the night into the next morning. Uncles and cousins and brothers and sons and daughters caught up in the crossfire, lined up into the crosshair, drag, dragged out of cars and executed on the sides of roads because their daddies are slick or seem to want to be slick or seem to have some sort of thickness in their hair. I want to go from, and they go home to her and get down on their knees and wet the lap of her skirt with their tears, crying. I'm ready, I'm ready. When we were kids, we didn't have a lot of dolls. We, you know, we didn't have a lot of dolls. To have a doll that you could dress and like, comb their hair and do all those things, that was special. 
So partly I'm experiencing that kind of delight and I am also experiencing the complete opposite of that preciousness in kind of dialoguing with the tar baby aspect of the figures. And that's like my own dialogue, being black and having the wonderful curly hair that I have and the shape that I have and looking a certain way as a child. And even though I grew up in the 80s in Los Angeles, there was still a sense, I still grew up with a really strong sense that I was not worth as much as other people, that like white people were worth more and that Asian people were worth more than Mexican people. Like there was this whole hierarchy of like race worth. So there are a whole lot of different conversations that go into those pieces. But when I make them, the final, um, one of the final stories for me through all the process of collecting the materials and creating the sculptures is what if these were not worthless? Like what if these figures, they were turn of the 20th century objects and we just grew up in a society where these types of figures and these type of features and these types of images were, were powerful and beautiful and purposed and that we just, what if we lived a different way? What if we believed different things about each other? If I start the next one, you can paint some of it? <laughs> just paint it with love. All right, do me a favor, take this and go hang it over the gate. The front gate, like not the part that opens up, the part next to it, like right here. It'll be dry in 15 minutes. I've been gay since I was a toddler. I was flirting with all the hottest girls on the playground. I was trying to help them up the monkey bars while simultaneously looking under their skirts. I told my mother, I was like, I'm not dating men anymore. She's like, Vanessa, fine. She's like, shut up. There's not much a man can offer you. Do what you will, whatever. And then my dad started going to church. Yes, I am packing a bag that's for tools. Because I don't really have a bag. And shoes go on your feet. I come from Hattie Mae, Cherokee Nation, Trail of Tears, my dear, Mel Rouge, Louisiana, Liza, Wild Iowa. I come from Hattie Mae, Cherokee Nation, Trail of Tears, my dear, Mel Rouge, Louisiana, Liza, Wild Iowa. I come from in between her fingertips. Oh, I should be louder. Are they listening for me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. In between her fingertips. I was doing it to myself. Four lines before the cue. Anything is possible. Absolutely anything. Right here, right now. Pencil say, I don't care what you heard about on the street. This is where it happens. An outlandish, ridiculous, too much, too much kind of anything like Stanley Turrentine about to just drop into the saxophone. Or Billy Strayhorn born straight up out of his mama singing, you might take the A train to find the quickest way to get to Harlem. And it happens. Boom, sizzle, scratch. Pencil in my hand, piece of paper in front of me. Here it comes and it rises. A window, a walkway with cross-hatched lopsided slats of light falling. All I got to do is to write myself a doorway and then walk right on through it.
disastrous thinking about, God, I should be this or I should be that. Am I even an artist? I cut dolls apart. I bring trash home. I glue shit together. I'm not an artist. I'm just somebody who does this. What is an artist? And I have to be that. I need to go to the Rhode Island School of Design. I need to have somebody tell me that it's all right. I need somebody's permission. I didn't feel valid in some of the things that I was doing. People People like, like, why do you have to make, make such a black, black thing? thing? Maybe, Maybe I should make multiracial dolls. Maybe, Maybe I shouldn't swear in my poems. poems. Maybe, Maybe I need to think the change in everybody. I need to be the, I need to be the, I need to be the Jill Scott Neo Soul version of myself. It's very difficult to exist like this. There's a great imbalance. The tragic imbalance that existed in my mind. And I'd say the tragic imbalance because like I didn't want to be alive. Do you understand why you deserve your own name? when you look at this? If you look right in the center, all you, you see yourself with a black face? Uh-huh. It should work. Is it working? Oh, that's awesome. Time passes sometimes when I'm in the studio. 12 hours, just like that. Time goes away and I know that I'm experiencing like a great gift. I feel really, really lucky to have that and because I could be seeking it somewhere out in the world. I could be out somewhere looking for a relationship to give me that feeling. I could be shopping. I could be thinking I'm going to find the perfect fucking pair of jeans that makes me feel like that. And being disappointed and going crazy and being depressed and wanting to jump off of shit. Looking for the feeling that I get when I'm working right now. I have great evidence inside of myself. You know, so when I start to feel lunatical, I can go back to the evidence that I have and I can go into it. I'm not sure what you're trying to say. I, I can sort of guess, but I don't really know. <laughs> guess. It's fine. Well, you don't need my approval. Do you no, feel like I you need to know what it's about? I don't need to. I mean, I think they're great. They're very creative and provocative. Thanks. This is paper mache I form in a bowl. Yep, and this is an old doll head that I build out with plaster and wood glue. I've always wanted to do like really interactive art where people come to me and almost like I'm a medicine woman or a shaman or like I'm that person in the village that you can come to and you say, I need you to protect my daughter. I mean, we, you have to make her something. You have to do something. And I want to be that person to make those things. But in this society, nappy twists and big lips and shiny black skin and um, those were the images that were, and we were the people who were treated as less than, literally worth less than blondness, silkiness and quaint features and just all of that. Um, so in my mind, like I'm saying these things about worth and about the tar babies, but I see like a whole timeline of things. I see going to the corner liquor store and always being followed around and being treated so shitty. I remember trying to make myself the most appealing and least threatening version of myself as a kid. I remember being spit on and called nigger. I think about images of women who have been lynched and I think about knowing my grandmother and asking my grandmother what her mother's name was and if she remembers her grandmother's name. And I think about not knowing a whole lot of my family's history. So it's connected to all of these different things about family and history and worth, human worth, like am I innately valuable or like what do I have to do? No, I haven't ever sold this much work. It's, um, it's, 
allowed me to get more art supplies, which is really nice. <laughs> I took my mom to see a show. Um, and, but it's also, it's not good because where I'm living is going into foreclosure and I have to move. Um, and I, uh, so that's, it's, it's good. it would have to all be redone, but that's not hard. It doesn't have to be demolished. To me, condemned is like the house up the street that's falling down into the street. I hope she calls me back. I'll clean up this real quick. I could clean this up, take all this trash, get a dumpster, put this out in a day. Take the windows that they still have and put glass in them. Come on. You know, like where there's still frames, it's easier to fix things, and I like to make, you know, it's nice to make something your own, you know? That's how I feel anyway. Make it your own. I was nervous to perform because I thought, oh, I'm at Martha's Vineyard. I'm at where, with people who, they don't know who I, people are not familiar. Nobody's going to come to my show. They're going to hate me. They're going to be upset for me for cussing, you know, like, because I think different kinds of people go to Martha's Vineyard. I heard stories, I did some research, and I was like, oh, I'm in for it. leave their whole lives in a pile of unfinished poems, broken bones, busted lips and bruises. And I'm only telling you this because I'm just, I'm really just trying to figure out why. Why do these things keep happening? I mean, maybe, maybe he didn't even mean to kill her. Maybe if you really just want a black woman to die, She'll simply stop breathing all by herself. Everybody has been on the bus with the crazy bus man. You know, you get on the bus after work, you want to relax, you want to look out the window and watch the trees, and then here he comes talking about feet and chicken and Jesus trying to touch you. So I don't blame people for giving him that crazy, wary eyed narrow look like, mm, is this the beginning of something? Or has he already gotten where he wants to go? <laughs> so I'm sitting close, but not too close, you know. And I'm watching him. And I think that it looks kind of beautiful. This one arm ballet. I mean, it's just the seriousness of all of it. And I think he, looks like somebody I got to write a poem about. So I start reaching into my bag for the Blackberry. And he stops me with his eyes, quick and sharp and hard like he knew just what I was thinking. He says, listen, I am just looking for something that I lost. I am looking for something that my mama left behind in a sigh in a deep, sweet huff of breath. I think she might have misplaced it in the grocery store one night. Or oh, could be, maybe my daddy knocked it out of her mouth. 
I don't know where she left it, but I know I need it right now. It is the long lost, mysteriously disappeared thing that I didn't even know I needed until my end started in on the air like this. Fingers working at the keypad. This is hard business, configuring the combination. He says, it probably just looks like I am the crazy bus man. And I said, oh, it does. <laughs> Trail of tears, my dear Mary Rouge, Louisiana Liza, Wild Iola. I come from Hattie May, Cherokee Nation. Trail of tears, my dear Mary Rouge, Louisiana Liza, Wild Iola. I come from in between her fingertips. It's magic. You believe in magic, don't you? Not some kind of Hollywood, razzmatazz, smoking mirror kind of magic, no. Though ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of drama.